three, and four. 1969, Bob Dylan came to town. I really wanted to play on a Dylan session because I was such a huge fan. And it was like something I knew I could treasure for the rest of my life if I got to play on one Dylan session. The guitar player that they had had booked something like 15 sessions to the album. And they had booked him for all the sessions except one, and he could not make the first one he was booked. So Bob said, you come play the first one, and I did. And when I got through and I was packing up, and he said, where is he going? Bob said, he's leaving, I got another guitar player. He said, I don't want another guitar player, I want him. And I mean, you know, it was like, wow. Like I had just won the lottery or something. To have somebody like Bob Dylan, probably the most respected musician in the country at the time in the world, express appreciation for what I was doing and wanted to be part of what he was doing was something I can't even articulate. But it really gave me a shot in the arm. And of course it raised some notoriety for me because Bob was always put the names of the people who played on the albums on the back. Mm -hmm. He gave them label credits. People look at this guy as a, a prophet and as a spokesman for the generation and all these things that I don't think he really wanted to be looked at that way, but they did. So they learned everything about him they possibly could and up to and including looking to see who played on his albums. There my name was. I just saw a copy today. Somebody just gave me an old copy of Nashville Skyline and I had to turn it over to look, make sure it was still <laughs> Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, play a song for me. One of the things that I've always loved about Bob Dylan, but he always had that freedom. And it made people like me, that when I got ready to do my creative thing, to go in to your career with that same attitude of, hey, this is me, this is what I'm gonna do. And you stop and think, if you listen to those early, that was a total departure from My Fair Lady. You know, the bubblegum stuff that was coming out at the time, I mean, it was just a total departure. I think he did more to, to expand the borders of popular music than anybody. You got a catalog like Bob Dylan. You you have one album you want to pay tribute to the to this guy with. How do you pick the ten? My aim was to do it without sounded like I didn't want to copy anything on any of Bob's albums. Any, any of his songs. I didn't want to do the arrangement. I didn't want to do the instrumentation. We changed the beats, we changed the rhythm, we changed so much on it. And of course the vocal. You know, I told my co-producer when I went in, I said, listen, if I start doing this, if I start, you know, stop me, because I don't want to do that. We got it and you won't be dead to kick your shoes out. We picked songs that we could make, we could leave our mark on. There were some that I thought about doing and I tried that I felt we can't, we're not gonna pull this one off and leave our CDB mark on it strong enough to separate it from what they did. Because the way they did it is about the only way it could be done. Sure. And so we we culled through songs like that and came up with these 10. The interesting thing is uh, as a Dylan fan, hearing you actually sing the lyrics in a way that, and no offense to Dylan, but I actually, can understand, understand the lyrics. The lyrics. <laughs> All right. 